This is the lesson video for section 2.3. So again, y'all make sure that you're watching these video lessons because these are things that I'm not going to cover in class. But as always, if you have questions about them, you're more than welcome to ask me in class because in class I just like to spend our time practicing more than going over vocabulary that you've probably been learning since middle school. All right, so section 2.3 is on elements and compounds. Okay, so we've already discussed states of matter like solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. We've discussed mixtures, the difference in heterogeneous, homogeneous, how to separate them. And so now we're going to get to elements and compounds. So an atom is the smallest part of an element that retains its identity in a chemical reaction. Atoms cannot change into different types of atoms. What I mean by that is oxygen atoms cannot turn into hydrogen atoms through physical or chemical means. The atoms have to retain their identity. And that's the smallest part of an element. We can't go any smaller than that or we've lost the identity of the element. So examples would be sulfur, which is S on the periodic table, and sodium, which is Na on the periodic table. Molecules, on the other hand, are bonded collections of two or more atoms of either the same element or different elements. So an atom is just one thing, just S, just Na, just H. Those are one thing. Those are atoms. Molecules are when atoms bond together. So they can be of the same element or different. So for example, water is made of water molecules. They're H2O. That means I have two hydrogens and one oxygen bonded together. So I have atoms of different elements, but really I have two of the same element there. All right, oxygen that we breathe in exists as O2. It doesn't actually exist as just O by itself. Um, so the fact that there's more than one oxygen bonded together makes it a molecule. Okay, because remember, the molecules can be of the same element or they can be of different elements. So, for example, CO2, carbon dioxide, that has C and two O's, so that would be a molecule. Whereas, you know, lithium, Li, that's just one thing, so that would be considered an atom. So let's talk a little bit about elements because we're going to use them a lot because we focus on the periodic table of elements. It's one of my favorite things. Hopefully it'll be one of your favorites too, although I know it won't. All right, so elements are substances that cannot be broken down into simpler, oh goodness, you hear that? Simpler substances by chemical or physical means. So in other words, once you get down to an element, like if I break down a substance, if I break down water into hydrogen and oxygen, those are both elements, I can't break it down any further. Elements are the most simple form of matter that we have. Okay, it consists of atoms with the same atomic number. So the atomic number on the periodic table is the number in the top corner. So for example, if I could isolate hydrogen, those atoms would all have an atomic number of one because hydrogen is number one on the periodic table. Now elements can be made of atoms or molecules. And this is where it kind of throws some people off. Okay, and so you just look at the formula. So 10 is Sn. Is that just one thing? Yes. So 10 would be made of 10 atoms. So all of those atoms would be next to each other and make a crystal of 10. We'll talk about metals and crystals a little bit later. Fluorine, on the other hand, exists as F2. So since there's two of them, it's no longer an atom, it's a molecule. But because it's only made of F atoms, it's still just an element because all of them are F. Okay, so 10 is made of Sn atoms. Fluorine is made of F2 molecules. All right, and so again, you just look at the difference in the formulas to tell whether it's an atom or a molecule. All right, so next we have allotropes. Allotropes are different forms of a given element. So what that means is it's the same element, but the atoms are bonded in a way that makes the actual uh, look and feel of the substance different. So an example would be carbon. Carbon can exist as diamond, graphite, or Buckminster fullerene, which we shorten as buckyball. So let's look at the bonding, because I know you know the difference in what like a diamond and graphite looks like. Graphite, by the way, is what is in your pencil lead. It's not lead, lead's poisonous. All right, it's a graphite that's in your pencil. Um, so let's look at the difference in the bonding. All three of these things are made only of carbon. But this is the structure of diamond. And I'll show you these again in class because I know it's probably hard to see in the video. Um, diamond has what we call a tetrahedral structure. It is very, very strong. Hence the reasons diamonds are some of the hardest substances known to man. 
okay? Very, very strong bonding. Whereas graphite, on the other hand, is not strong at all. You can write with that, okay? Graphite has much different bonding. It looks like this. It has a honeycomb structure, and the honeycomb structure is formed in different sheets. So when you write with your pencil, these sheets break off, and that's what leaves that trail on your paper. So this bonding is not nearly as strong as the diamond. That's why we can write with graphite. We cannot write with diamonds. All right, and then the last one, which you're probably a little less familiar with, is Buckminster Fullerene. Buckminster Fullerene was first discovered in ashes and soot. When you burn something, you left with a lot of carbon. Um, and it is actually a spherical molecule. It's alternating six and five membered rings. It is a real molecule. It's not just something that I made up. And it is also only made of carbon. And so as you can see, they're all the same element. They're all carbon, but they're different forms. The bonding looks different. And again, I'll show you all those in class because I know it's probably hard to see that in the video. All right, so our next thing is compounds. Okay, so elements are made of one type of atom. Compounds, on the other hand, are substances with a fixed proportion that can be broken down into elements by chemical processes. Okay, so compounds are made of more than one element. And don't let fixed proportion throw you off. <laughs> of course. Ms. Gregory, please come to the office. Ms. Gregory, please come to the office. All right, so um, don't let fixed proportion throw you off. All that means is it's the same ratio. Like water is H2O, and so it's always two hydrogens and one oxygen every time. But we can break it down into elements. So water, which is H2O, can be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. Now compounds, because it's more than one element, they are always made of molecules. Elements can be atoms or molecules. Compounds are always molecules. So for example, carbon dioxide is a compound, CO2, and CO2 is a molecule. Okay. Now not all compounds are necessarily made up of what we call a molecule, because some of them we refer to as an ionic compound, which is made of crystals instead. And so sodium chloride would kind of be an example of that, where we don't really call it um, a molecule because it's ions that are bonded together. But again, you can see that it is not made of atoms. Okay, and it is a compound because it has sodium and chlorine bonded together. Okay, so elements can be either atoms or molecules, but they have only one type of atom. Compounds are made of more than one element. So let's look at this picture and look at the difference in, you know, elements, compounds, and mixtures. Because some people get them confused. And in class, I'll do a little activity with you where we'll pass around some bags with beads in it to make sure you really got this concept. All right, so elements, the uh, way this chart is set up is atoms identity is based on the color. So if it's the same color, it's the same type of atom. So elements, they must only exist of the same type of atom. So if you look in this box, they're all green. So this is all one type of atom, um, and because they're all by themselves, they're all atoms. So this would be an element made of atoms. Over here, they're all the same type, but because they're paired up, they're bonded together, they're no longer atoms. At that point, they're molecules, but because they're all the same color, this would be an element that's made of molecules. Okay, so elements can be made of atoms, elements can be made of molecules. All right, next was mixtures. Okay, we talked about mixtures in a previous video. Mixtures means you have different types of particles in your substance. Okay, so here I have some green, but some are orange. So those aren't the same. So that's why it's a mixture. I've mixed the green and orange together. But green and orange exists as atoms. So I've mixed green atoms with orange atoms. So it's a mixture made of atoms. On this one, I have some green and some blue. The green ones are by themselves, so they're atoms. But if you notice, the blue ones are together. So those are molecules. So this would be a mixture of these two elements. We just mix those two together. All right, we can also have mixtures of different types of molecules because here we have some pink and some blue. They're all molecules because they're all bonded. So this would be mixtures of a molecule. And then the last one we have is a mixture because of course we have some that are pink and then we have some that are green and pink. So if you can find different particles that look different, see how all these particles look exactly the same? All of these particles look exactly the same. This is a pure substance, it's an element. But these, since they have different particles, it's a mixture. Now compound is the one that people mess up because they want to call it a mixture or they want to call mixtures compounds. That's the confusing one. 
Okay, so a compound, you're going to see different colors because remember, it's more than one element bonded together. But the difference in a mixture is that every particle is still the same. You see how every single one is one green and two pinks? Every single one? So every particle is still the same here. So that's what makes it a compound instead of a mixture. Whereas if you look like over here, we had some that were green with two pinks and some that were two pinks. Okay, so elements, they're all going to be the same color. Mixtures, you're going to see different types of particles. And compounds, you're going to see different colors, but every particle should still be the same set. All right, and so use this to kind of guide you. Like I said, I'll do a little activity in class with some bags of beads so that we can just make sure you got this. So last thing before we jump into that section of assessment is a chemical formula. All right, so each element is represented by a chemical symbol. Now on the periodic table, most elements are only one or two letters. If you look near the very end, you'll see these random UU ones, and that just means they haven't officially picked a name for them yet. Although my periodic table is kind of old, so they probably pick names at this point. The first letter of a chemical symbol is always capitalized. So if it's just one letter, it's a capital letter. So hydrogen is H, so it's a capital H. If it's two letters, only the first one's capitalized. Okay, so for example, like I said, hydrogen is H, so it's a capital H. If it's two letters, like for example, sodium is in A, I only capitalize the first one and I lowercase the second one. Y'all, I am extremely picky about this. Extremely picky about it. Okay, because I need to make sure that you're doing it right. All right, I'm not being picky to be mean. I'm just being picky because I want to make sure your answers are correct. Okay, so first letter is capitalized. If there is a second letter, it's lowercase. All right, so subscripts in a formula tell how many atoms of each element we have. For example, SiO2. So this right here is the subscript. So what this, is, what this formula tells me is there is one Si, which is silicon, and there are two oxygens. That's what it tells me. One Si, one silicon atom, and two oxygens. So see y'all, if I had written it all in caps, like this, not following the rules that we just talked about, lowercase in the second one, that would appear like it was one sulfur, one iodine, and two oxygens. And so see, that's a completely different meaning. Okay, so you've got to follow the rules of, you know, the symbols. And so like I said, the subscripts just tell how many. So something you may be familiar with from biology. C6H12O6, what's that? You sure already know, glucose. All right, so that tells me I have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens, and one molecule of glucose. All right, so let's look at our section assessment for this section. So number one, it says, how is a compound different from an element? Well, a compound is made of more than one type of atom or more than one element. So made of more than one element bonded together. And I'm just going to do an example because sometimes if you're like me, having an example kind of helps. An example would be water. We have hydrogen and oxygen bonded together. An element is only one type of atom. Okay, so for example, if we had, you know, helium. H-E. It's just all helium atoms. That's it. Nothing else. Alright, so compounds made of more than one element. Element is only one type of atom. Alright, how can you distinguish a substance from a mixture? Okay, a substance, sometimes it's called a pure substance because it's pure. It's uniform throughout. And so that's how you would tell. A substance is uniform throughout where a mixture has a variable composition. Okay, so a substance is uniform throughout, whereas a mixture has a variable composition. Think about salad as a mixture. You can see all these different parts in the salad. Whereas a substance, like if you have pure gold, every part of that is a gold atom, and that's it. Okay, so uniform throughout, or like I said, you can remember as being pure. All right, so next one, it says, classify each of these samples of matter as an element, a compound, or a mixture. 
Now for most of you, compound is the hardest one for people to determine. So don't try to do that one first. What I always do is I decide if it's an element. If it's not, I decide if it's a mixture. If it's not, then it must be a compound. That's the best way to do it. Okay, so then how do you decide whether it's an element or a mixture? Well, if it's an element, where is it going to be listed? On the periodic table of elements. So if you see it on the periodic table, it's an element. If it's not on the periodic table, it's not an element. For a mixture, if you can think of things that were mixed together to make it, then it's a mixture. All right, and then if it's neither of those, it must be a compound. All right, so let's look at table sugar. Is table sugar on the periodic table? No, so it's not an element. Can you think of things that you mix together to make sugar, or is sugar just made of sugar? Just made of sugar, so it's not a mixture, so it has to be our last option, and that is a compound. Okay, so it's not on the periodic table, so it's not an element. I can't think of things that were mixed together to make it, so it's not a mixture. So that leaves me with compound for table sugar. All right, let's look at part B, cough syrup. Is cough syrup on the periodic table? No. Now I know some of you are like, I don't know everything on the periodic table. Trust me, you'll get used to what's on the periodic table throughout this class. All right, so cough syrup is not an element. Can you think of things that were mixed together to make cough syrup? Well, usually they have some sort of medicine. They usually have water in there. They usually have some sort of color and some flavor in there. A lot of times they have alcohol in there. That's why they tell you not to give it to your kids to make them go to sleep. So since I can think of things that were mixed together to make it, cough syrup would be a mixture. All right, part C, ooh, water is a tricky one. Notice I've specified it is tap water. Okay, there's a difference in tap water and pure water. Tap water, as much as we like to think it's pure, it is not. There are lots of things dissolved in that tap water. Okay, so is tap water on the periodic table? No. Is it a mixture? Yes. Okay, have you ever heard of hard water stains? That's when, like, say you don't wash your, clean your shower for a little while, or like the faucet in your shower, you'll see kind of this whitish residue on it. Those are the dissolved compounds that are coming out of your tap water. And it's called hard water when it has more compounds than normal water does. Okay, so tap water is not pure, so it is a mixture. Now, if it was pure water, it would be a compound. Okay, because then it would just be made of water molecules. All right, so the last thing is nitrogen. Is nitrogen on the periodic table? Ding, ding, ding. Yes, it is. So nitrogen would just be an element. All right, so like I said, just use that line of thinking. Is it on the periodic table? If it is, it's an element. If it's not, move on. Can I think of things that were mixed together to make it? If I can, it's a mixture. If I can't, then it's a compound. All right, so let me erase and let's knock out the last few because I think there's a few more questions on this section assessment. All right, so elements and their symbols. Okay, so there are 35 elements that you have to memorize in this class, and you'll probably learn a lot more than just those 35 too, just over using them over and over and over again. All right, so it says write the chemical symbol for each element. Lead, what is that one? Lead is PB, capital P, lowercase b, okay? When you see elements like lead where the symbol doesn't match the name at all, like where in the world did P and B come from if it's lead? It comes from old Latin names, okay? And this comes from plumbum. Um, if you remember a plumber works on lead pipes, that might help you remember. Some people like to remember, this is completely false, but some people like to remember, oh, there's a lot of lead in my peanut butter, so I need to be careful. There's not, or there shouldn't be. Um, but that's just a way some people remember. All right, silver is another weird one that comes from its old name, and silver is AG, capital A, lowercase g. All right, hydrogen should be an easy one. That one is a capital H. Oxygen should be an easy one. That's capital O. Sodium is another weird one. It comes from natrium, so it's actually capital N, lowercase a. Okay, again, just comes from the old name. Aluminum should be pretty easy, it's just the first two letters. It is capital A, lowercase l. All right, and so, y'all, I have the 35 elements that you need to memorize listed on my website. So you need to study them. You need to know them throughout the whole year. Okay, they never go away. All right, next one, I gave you the symbol and I want the name. So what is C? Well, C is carbon. All right, CA is calcium. K 
oh, that's one of those old names, is potassium. Not potassium, P is phosphorus. All right, AU is gold. A lot of people get AU and AG, gold and silver mixed up. Okay, I'll tell you a way in class to help you remember the difference in this. I need to point at my periodic table. I can't really do that on this video, so I'll just show you in class. All right, FE, oh my gosh, another old name. <laughs> FE is actually iron. All right, and then CU, another old name, comes from cuprum. It is actually copper. A lot of people want to say that copper is CO, but CO is cobalt. All right, so y'all, make sure that you learn those 35 elements because, like I said, they do not go away. But that is section 2.3.